Um, all right, Bert, uh, there was a big firing. It got to car. It got the main news came th- that same day. What was your reaction? Were you to Sala getting fired? Happened? No, it came at 10 05. Okay. I mean, I could have done the whole show. My reaction so Robert Sala was fired as head coach of the Jets. Albrick, who's the defensive coordinator, was promoted as head coach. So, and then something else happened. But when that happened, when they said Sala was fired, I said, fine. I mean, fine. You know, I I don't, in my opinion, that doesn't make anything worse than it was. Solid didn't do well. So, whatever. If the team likes Albrick and Albrick was a head coaching candidate in the offseason, yeah. fine. Um, their offense sucks. Mm-hmm. So, and then the they... The reaction to dem- the locker room was interesting, too. Okay, go ahead, because I don't know what happened. So, the reaction to the locker room, my understanding is, was something along the lines of, well, what the hell is this going to do? Which is interesting, because the locker room really liked Sala, and... I think their view of it was similar to what you've heard from a lot of people on the outside, which is more or less like just, again, taking the temperature of the public. I think it's the same as like what's inside that locker room, which is we had a really good defense. This is a defensive minded head coach. This is a guy who's sort of flipped the culture here. The offense is a mess, but he was going to change the play caller. So like, why do and now, t- and now you're and now and now it's potential the potential here and I, I like Jeff Ulbrich, but the potential here is that you weaken the defense by doing this because now the guy who's the defensive cor- d- defensive coordinator defensive play caller has a lot more th- a lot more on his plate. They were down except in the Patriots game every game. Yep. They got down in a huge hole. They're not prepared, and I believe that's coaching. And I I mean, Sala is responsible for everything. Yep. Just be, and that's what's odd about this whole thing. If you're like, if Kyle Shanahan, if the 49ers give up 45 points and the offense scores 30, do people go, great job, Kyle? Like, your offense scored 30 points and the defense scored 45 points. Like, you're responsible for the operation. And also, Bert. Hackett's an idiot. And and, and, and an idiot took over for him. So that's a mess. But, But the point is this is that. Sal is responsible for that team starting, and I think, and you might agree that the way a team starts games is kind of indicative yeah. of coaching. Like if you come out every game and fall behind, why? Like it's not a talent issue. It's because the implication it, is the coach didn't have the team ready to go. The implication, I think, that the facts are like right. if four out of five games you couldn't, dude. There are uh, Levis being Levis away. For winning one game, it, I mean, from for being one and four. I mean, the only team that they really beat was, was the so- Patriots. Was a sorry outfit down the street. Yeah, well, and the Patriots suck. Yeah. So I mean, look. No, I say, and I would agree with that, Fred. Especially for a defensive-minded head coach, if you can't stop the other team from scoring first, or you so, can't you can't impose upon your offensive coordinator to have a good 10, 12 scripted what plays I'm to, tell to you go down like, the field and get on the board, then that's on the head coach. So yeah, and, and I, I understand that. I'm just trying to take you guys inside the mentality of the player here. Sure. Of the, the player again isn't looking at this big picture. The player is looking at the small picture, which is if you were gonna do this, why didn't you do it before the season? We really like this guy. And how does this help me right now? How does this uh, okay. change things right now? What if I it says to a, them Okay, everyone's on notice. This is a sense of urgency. And that can work sometimes, and maybe they'll get like the dead cat bounce like this week. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> see, I said that, and Fred had never heard it before. I, really? Yeah. I yeah. Either. It's one of those things that's not true, though. <laughs> they just go split hat, and then guts fly. Oh, guts bounce. <laughs> It's fun. You can take apart uh, a, a cat when you get home and I throw mean, its organs down and see I what, mean, even what Jeff, gives. Even Jeff Saturday got that. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, no, he didn't win another game. He, he, went, he, he went to Harvard. Uh, yeah. Well, listen. Jeff it, it, Saturday. It, there is a time where you have all that talent and you and they Isn't have that kind to. kind of sad. <laughs> That's what like was, Jeff Saturday, like. like he should have never taken the job if he, he was so smart. He had this distinguished, <laughs> he had this distinguished career. Right? He was yeah. Peyton Manning center. He's like an all-time player in that organization. And now what everybody's going to remember him for is like a clown show 10-game. Yeah. Like, okay. yeah. He coached some Christian youth league. Yeah. Jeff Sa- if you don't know Jeff Saturday, you know, was big player guy, big 
Ivy League guy and then was a he'd probably be a Hall of Famer, right? He's probably got his number retired and everything. In be, like, I, I don't know if he's in the ring of honor or whatever. He, he, yet, but, but he, he will, will be. be. He will be, yeah. But he had no coaching experience. Fred, what do you mean he had no coaching experience? He had never coached football at any position at any level. And they offered him the head coaching job. And he went, yeah, I could do it. Yeah, Jim, Jim Like Ursay. in the middle of the season. Like, yeah, yeah whatever with Ursay, dude. We've talked to him. Ursay's, Ursay's a maniac, yeah. and this is a maniac move. Ursay's, Ursay's done a lot of damage to himself. <laughs> and there's no doubt about it. It's not mean. He has. But when someone <laughs> has done a lot of damage to themselves that says, hey, I have a good idea for you, you should say, Thank you, but I don't know if you're in the best frame of mind to be telling me what's good yeah. for me. And but I he is in the position to tell you what's good for you because he's the boss. It's a lot, but not he's not your boss yet. You don't have to do it. He oh, you're have saying, to oh, Jeff I'm just saying Jeff Saturday. Yes. No, if I'm Jeff Saturday, I, I got to get a little bit of humility and go, like, I am not prepared to do this. I, I can't somebody, do this. I had somebody give me, give me a great line a couple of years ago. Um, it was, I don't even think it was about Jeff Saturday, but it was – uh, it was another NFL head coach who goes to be like, I, I was talking about this situation with them and uh, you know, what was in reference to it was in reference to Patricia and judge mm-hmm. taking the offensive coordinator job. And it applies to Jeff Saturday too, which was, it was something along the lines of like, well, it was like, if I asked you, he's talking to me, it goes, well, if I asked you to fly our team playing to Pittsburgh for the game this weekend, you might want to help, but you probably wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a good point. All right, so you've talked to all the principals in this, and uh, you, you've gone on the record that you talked to, to Sala about it, and you had reports about Woody Johnson and stuff. Um, did Aaron Rodgers get Sala fired? No, and they have a good relationship. Sala was actually in the quarterback room um, the this summer and into the fall. He'd taken a more active role in trying to fix the offense. And so Rogers and him, I mean, they're not best friends, but they had a they had a good relationship over the last year and a half, and I think they grew closer over the last few months as Salah was in the quarterback room. They had a half hour discussion. They talked one on one on Wednesday. Um, I look, look, I know everybody's looking for the smoking gun here. I, I you know, like Woody said himself that he talked to Rogers on Monday night. I like, I don't know what the benefit for Aaron Rodgers would be to getting a coach fired i don't think he had anything to do with okay yeah well he pushed him on the sideline so that's the big thing um they make the move with hackett i i I apologize for going into this so hard but i mean i can only talk to trey may about uh, Drake may so much uh they they, you know they they make the the change with hackett obviously hackett's on the staff because of rogers yep i heard this on espn yesterday and i thought it was an interesting take that maybe and this is another thing maybe hackett should do it like, why why don't you become the Guerrero to Rodgers? Like, Rodgers Guerrero. Like, Hackett's never going to coach again after this year. So why don't, why doesn't Rodgers just go, look, I'll hire you, and you'll just be my guy. Like and his then, body coach? No, well, like, no, but, the, like, I'll be your quarterback guru. Like, there's a guy in the NBA, right? Oh, oh, John, oh, oh yes. you mean like his quarterback trainer? Like, like yeah, 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 yeah. Palmer. Exactly. Or so one you, of those yeah, guys, so John you know that. Back, like those guys. Right. Yeah. So the thing, but no, but you, you you understand what I'm saying with Guerrero. Like Guerrero was Brady's yeah. guy. Yeah. So yeah. like like, why can't the Jets just? He can still travel with the team and he can still do everything else, but he's not on the Jets payroll and he's gone because that sounds better to me than him still being on the staff where he just is obviously well, so unqualified is, and has been demoted. So my understanding is like he and um, Downing are flipping roles. So there is like a function that Downing was serving. And I actually think this isn't a bad way to do it, All right. but there was a sun- function that, that Downing was serving as the pass game coordinator stuff that, you know, overseeing certain things mm-hmm. and being quality control over certain things where that role now needs to be backfilled with downing being becoming the de facto offensive coordinator so like i think the way they're going to do it to create the less least disruption to the staff is have hackett fill in and do a lot of the things that downing was doing mm-hmm. before and you know i think he's also still a resource to rogers and that's yeah. what's valuable about him is that he has all of these years having coached Rodgers. Right. So he has this background with Rodgers that I think is still valuable. Well, it's done wonders. And I'll tell you, Downing's a real, <laughs> Downing's a real star, too. And you know what? Downing's, <laughs> had, a, Downing's had a rough goal. Yeah, like he, his, he, 
He's I mean, not he, good either. He was really I, good at Tennessee, right? No. Like, no. Good, well, play, good well, at playing. Uh, not, not great with the Raiders. But he had a similar – it's funny because he had a similar thing where he was known in Oakland as being Derek Carr's guy, and that's what saved him a couple of times in Oakland when he was the yeah, offensive yeah, coordinator yeah, there. Quite a collection. Uh, he goes to Tennessee, and I think you guys all know what happened on that. Was it was a fateful Thursday night, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Like when they beat the Packers? Is that right? Is it the Packers? I think they beat the Packers in Green Bay. Yeah. Okay. So he had uh, – a little bit of a setback that night. Uh, Tiny. Yeah. Wait, what happened? He was the guy who got the DUI after the Thursday night game. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember that. Okay, so like he was the coordinator of the Titans. And this was right when the Titans fired John Robinson as their GM. And like all hell was kind of breaking loose with that organization. And uh, Todd Downing was their offensive coordinator. He, They fly back from Green Bay. And that night he got a DUI in Nashville at like four in the morning. But it was it was like an extreme DUI, as I remember it. It was it was right, bad. which is that, yeah. and that was when like the whole issue of uh, the rules about players and coaches drinking on the plane. Right, it's like what up. happened with the Cardinals when the guy died in the DUI coming back from right. a, a road trip. All right, uh, Bert. Well, thank you for all of that. You, uh, it's nice to know the Jets are a complete mess, and uh, thank you for in making that clear to me. If you like that clip, and how could you not? Check out more videos from Toucher and Hardy here. Point slightly up and to the left. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. Point slightly down and to the left. And for the latest from the Sports Hub, download at 98.5thesportshub.com.